Hi, everyone. Um, as you just heard, my name is David. I'm from a place called Trend Watching. Uh, we are all about the trends reshaping technology, innovation, and the world around us. And in this talk, I just want to share three powerful trends that are going to reshape life in the 21st century. Three trends that could change your life. Okay, so at Trend Watching, we are obsessed with one question where next? Where next for us as individuals? Where next for our societies? It's become common to observe. We live at a moment of accelerated change. How do we make sense of it all? Uh, TED is a place for big ideas. So here is my big idea. There is a simple, powerful core truth that can help us to get a handle on all this change, start to make sense of it, and draw out emerging trends. And here is that truth. Yes, we live in a world of change, but amid all that, we are still the same humans with the same old basic human needs. So human beings are motivated by a set of basic needs and wants. Things like value, security, excitement, convenience, love, whatever it is, they're very stable. They don't really change decade on decade. At their most fundamental, they don't change century on century. And trends, new trends in human behavior, are built of those two building blocks. On the one hand, change. On the other hand, basic human needs. And to be more specific about it, new trends emerge when some change in the world, often a new technology, unlocks a new way of serving a basic need. So if we want to understand where we're all heading in the 21st century, we need to look out to the world and ask ourselves, how are the technologies emerging now going to serve our basic human needs in new ways? And we know there's a powerful set of technologies emerging right now. I'm talking about the set of technologies that we typically cluster under the banner of the fourth industrial revolution. So AI, VR, augmented reality, automation and robotics, uh, genetic technology. In the 21st century, those technologies are going to unlock all kinds of powerful new ways of serving our human needs. So everyone is asking where next. Everyone wants to know how is life going to look, how is it going to feel, how is it going to be in the 21st century. And often the answers we get back revolve around the economy. So things like automation and unemployment or universal basic income. But if we want to understand our lives in the decades ahead, we need to look beyond just that to all kinds of human needs. And in fact, there's one particular higher order human need that is often forgotten that I think we need to pay particular attention to. And to understand why that is, just take a step back for a moment. Look at our own lives. Look at your life uh, in an early 21st century consumer society. Those societies have delivered massive abundance to all of us. They have freed us to obsess over a set of higher order questions. Questions like, am I happy? Am I loved? Am I creative? Okay, am I filling my potential? We obsess over those questions more than any other human beings in history. And it's really that quest for meaning, for meaning in life, that is going to define life for billions of affluent people in the decades ahead. Now, that quest for meaning is huge. So I've broken it down into three important component parts. It's connection, status, and belief. So three higher order human needs that are fundamental to the way people build meaning in their own lives. If you want to understand where humanity is going in the 21st century, you need to understand humans are social, they want to connect, they are status seeking, and they're hard coded to seek a higher meaning or a higher purpose in their life. So what I want to do right now is share three trends, one for each of these higher order human needs, three trends that are going to change our lives in the 21st century. Let's start with that first higher order human need, connection. Human beings are social animals. And all through history, the only other entities out there, the only other things we could connect to or talk to were other people. Um, we know there's a technology now that is disrupting that. Right now, millions of people all around the world are connecting to and they're having conversations with AI-fueled entities, artificial intelligence-fueled entities like Siri and Alexa and chatbots. Um, right now, those conversations are pretty primitive. 
and they're very transactional. They're conversations like, Alexa, uh, order me some washing powder. But we know that we're at the beginning of a profound shift. Okay, that's the subject of this first trend, virtual companions. The nature of our relationship with these AI-fueled entities is changing. It's going to go from a relationship that's about functionality and transaction to a relationship that's about deeper human things. People will connect to these AI-fueled entities for health, for wellness, even for friendship, companionship. We will see people start to feel they are truly in a relationship with these AI-fueled entities. Now, that can feel hard to believe, so let's take a tiny glimpse of where we're at now. This is Gatebox. This is a real innovation. It's from Japan. Uh, Gatebox is an AI-fueled home assistant with a difference. In fact, I've got a quick video to play to you, so check this out, and then we will talk. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is weird. <laughs> and look, I'm not showing you Gatebox to say you have to like it. Uh, I'm not showing it to you because I'm saying it's the next billion dollar idea. I'm showing it to you because it is a signal of this powerful underlying shift. The nature of our relationship with these AI-fueled entities is going to change, and we will see people start to feel that they are in a relationship with those entities, however strange that feels to us. And it does feel strange. If it feels strange to you, just think about this. Rewind 20 years, and some of you in this audience are too young to remember this, but in the late 90s, the early 2000s, the idea of online dating was steeped in deep humiliation and social shame. Meeting your partner online was something that no one really, very few people would want to admit to. Fast forward 20 years, we have 20 million matches on Tinder per day, and none of those people think they met online. They think they just met. So mindsets when it comes to relationships can shift, and I think we'll see a similar kind of shift again. If you still find it hard to believe, just ask yourself one further question. Put your hand on your heart and ask yourself, have you ever asked Siri or Alexa a question that goes beyond the purely functional. In fact, Apple know these conversations are already happening. So they say they're hiring counselors and psychologists into the Siri team so Siri can start to have more serious conversations with all of us. So this shift is real, this trend is real, and it has profound implications for us as individuals, for our societies. We need to see it coming now and start to think about how we're going to respond. OK, let's move on to the second trend. Human beings are status-seeking creatures. They want to elevate themselves above their peers. They want to mark themselves out as special. And we're seeing, coming down the pipeline, a whole load of technologies that are going to allow us not to just purchase symbols that make us seem special or allow us to claim we're special, but to actually literally upgrade our capabilities, our physical capabilities, our cognitive capabilities, our emotional capabilities, and that's the subject of this second trend, lab rats. 
Lab Rats is about saying the 21st century will be shaped in part by a status-fueled quest to upgrade ourselves as human beings. Again, let's take a very quick look at where we're at right now with this trend. So this is the electro-spit talk box. Um, it's a device, you can see it on the screen behind me, that sits around your neck. This is a device that can turn any person into a singer with perfect pitch. So it works like this. And you can, of course, also add vibrato that way. And if you're not super fast on the keys or you're just getting started, you can just solo over a, a major scale or any scale that you want to use and sound just like this. That way you're always in the right key, in the right. And that is just the beginning, okay? So we are going to see the emergence of technology. Some of them will be worn on the body, some of them will be inserted or implanted into the body that literally allow us to upgrade our capabilities, our physical, cognitive, emotional capabilities. Again, it feels hard to believe. It feels a strange world. But what did we see just this week? We saw this man, JK, stand on a stage uh, in a conference in Hong Kong and say he has created the world's first gene-edited babies using CRISPR technology. And we know DNA is going to play a big part in this status-fueled quest to upgrade ourselves. Where does it end? Where's this heading in the longer term? Perhaps it ends with the true merging of man and machine, uploading our mind to the clouds, all those things that technologists talk about. Again, a massive trend with profound implications for us as a society, for us as individuals, and we need to start thinking about it now. Okay, let's take a look at the final trend, belief. Human beings are hard-coded to seek a higher meaning in their lives. If you look across all the societies in history, they all had their religious beliefs. They all told stories that situated themselves within a broader meaning. Now, science and modernity have made it difficult for us to continue believing in those stories. But we are going now to start to build new worlds inside virtual reality, inside augmented reality, that will allow us to create all kinds of new forms of meaning, political meaning, even spiritual meaning. And that's what this final trend, augmented belief, is about. It's about saying in the 21st century, we're going to see a multiplicity of new forms of spiritual and religious meaning come about, fueled by these virtual worlds, these huge imagined worlds we are creating. Um, before we get onto religious belief, let's touch quickly on political belief. This is a man called Lawrence Lessig. He is a professor of politics at Harvard University. Lawrence Lessig is partnering with a UK startup called Improbable to create this world. It's a virtual world inside virtual reality called Seed. And Lawrence Le Lessig is writing the initial political conditions of this world. Then the idea is that thousands and eventually millions of people join this world and we get to see the evolution of this political state in real time and draw lessons from that about our democracies, our societies, what will we learn, how will we change our beliefs and our politics as a result. Again, where is this heading in the longer term? Well, we're already building massive shared virtual worlds. You guys all know this is Fortnite. It went crazy this year. Two months ago, there were 8.2 million simultaneous players of Fortnite. That means one in every 8,000 human beings on Earth was playing Fortnite at that moment, okay? Um, that's just the beginning. What happens when we can build virtual worlds that are totally immersive, totally persuasive? And you start to ask yourself, could we hard code religious meaning into those worlds? Could we create worlds where there really is a God in this world, where good deeds really are rewarded, where bad deeds really are punished? You can pray and your prayers will be answered. You start to ask yourself, can we build virtual utopias that no one will really want to leave because their life is so much more meaningful in this imagined world than it is in the real world. Again, a massive trend that will shape lives in the 21st century, and we need to start thinking about it now. Okay, so three higher order human needs, three trends that will do so much to shape our lives in the 21st century. I am almost gonna get out of here, but there is one final higher order need, one last thing, one final higher order need that we cannot forget about in all this, and that is power. Human beings 
are hard-coded to seek power over one another. Power cuts through all our relations with one another. And we made a big mistake in the first wave of digital innovation. We forgot to ask, where is the power going? If you rewind back to the early days of Silicon Valley, we were promised this bright, shiny, democratized future where everyone has a voice. We ended up with consolidation around a few massive platforms that have huge, unaccountable power over all of us. We don't want to make the same mistake again in the fourth industrial revolution. The stakes are even higher this time. So we have to be so vigilant, I think, about asking where is the power flowing to? Who is becoming the apple of companion robots? Who's becoming the Amazon of superhuman intelligence delivered to your door? You know, it's, an, it's another part of human nature, as soon as we see something new, to just immediately want to value judge it. Like, that's good, that's bad, that's terrifying, that's amazing. The truth about these tre trends is that they're not either good or bad or terrifying or amazing on their own. They just are. And it's really up to us to decide what they mean to decide how they shape our lives in the decades to come. So if we can see them coming clearly, we can think about how we want to respond, and we're vigilant about where the power is going, then we have a chance of helping to make sure these trends promote human flourishing uh, in the decades ahead and just take us to a place of even greater abundance and health and happiness. But that is more than enough for me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.